like to uh, 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 to thank uh, the, the, the organizer for this very kind invitation, Dan and, and Vic. So it's uh, it's actually a, a, a pleasure to be to be here and speaking uh, about fatigue management. So I, I hope at, at this point uh, you are tired enough to talk about fatigue. Are you? Good. So well, let, let us begin uh, with this case here. of a, a, a real case, but it's a commercial airliner. But let's talk about that. Okay. So, uh, this is what, uh, what happened, this is a real case uh, coming from the, the, uh, the, the FDR of this aircraft. And, and again, uh, sorry for this being a, a commercial airline example, but what I would like to point out is number one, uh, this was one of the first uh, uh, accidents, the, the first, the very first one was Guantanamo Bay, where the NTSB started uh, uh, looking into uh, fatigue as a, a component into the chain of events that can lead to the, to an accident. All of us uh, know quite well that it's not only one cause for an accident. But uh, so, as you can see here, uh, uh, the the the, uh, uh, the re report. Sorry for that. Uh, you know, impaired performance results resulting from fatigue and situational stress associated with the intent to land under these circumstances. Actually, here we have uh, meteorological conditions plus fatigue and plus other other factors as well as pressure uh, pressure to, uh, to to land. It was the end of a, a long day. Uh, anyways, many uh, uh, components into the, this accident, but fatigue was was mentioned here. And from 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 there, you know, more and more we are talking about fatigue. So uh, and actually, you know, business and general aviation accidents are even more common than uh, than in, in airlines. And if you think they'll be talking about airlines, and actually, you know, it's important to know that although we had uh, a lot of, uh, of you know, technology today, in every small aircraft, there's a lot of technology. One thing that didn't change uh, from the, from a hundred years ago uh, uh, in, in aviation was the, the human factor. You know, we are about the same uh, people that we are uh, from the time that we actually, when our ancestors left uh, Africa. To gain and to, to conquer Europe and, and, and eventually to come to America through the Strait of Bering. So we didn't change much. We got some fixes in the vision and here and there, but you know the, the, the equipment is basically the same thing from uh, you know thousands of, of, of years. So uh, in, it's important today, you know, that uh, in, in the in fatigue uh, risk management system. It should be part of uh, the whole safety management system that you can have. And this should include mitigation strategies and, uh, and specifically training and education. I reviewed as a, a very important point, and, and that's because uh, that's the, the reason I wanted to, to talk to you today. Because again, it doesn't matter if you are flying a small aircraft, a 172, a you know, small Cessna, or a, 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 a middle, a middle, or even a, a heavy jet. Again, you are the common. We are. We humans are the common denominator in aviation. So, and this, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I borrow from a, an NTSB presentation. Again, recent accidents highlight the need for a comprehensive fatigue management effort, and this is what we're, we are talking about. So, uh, and, and to a point that uh, uh, recently we have some changes in uh, Part 121 uh, regulations, and, and of course this doesn't apply to the kind of aviation we're doing, uh, I, I'm assuming. But anyways, uh, this is coming. You know, the regulator is, is thinking about it in a different way, because uh, 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 and 
incorporating education and awareness training programs and systems for monitoring flight crew fatigue as, a, as an important component uh, in the safety uh, management system. So, to, to better understand the framework we are talking and we are operating into, uh, you know, we have the regulations, we have the regulators, we have the policies that can, uh, should be followed, uh, you know, by, by the, uh, uh, the, the, the corporate uh, uh, aviation departments or the uh, or airlines, you name it, of course. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we are talking about ourselves because the regulator and the company policy will only provide you a certain amount of hours to, uh, you know, to manage your own fatigue. But it's you that when you go to, to, to bed or you don't go to bed, that you're is, uh, really the one who's uh, the major player into this uh, equation now. And, and that's uh, why I, I think it's, it's fascinating because, again, then I, a doctor can speak in a safety seminar because uh, uh, of the, this human factor. And again, the, the challenge, and I heard this from, from the FAA in, uh, uh, in another uh, uh, conference, is that how challenging it is to, uh, to regulate the rest period. Because of course, the rest period is your period. You, you know, you regulate your rest period. So no regulator, no uh, company policy put, you know, this. And therefore, it's a matter of uh, education and understanding, you know, the physiology or, and how things work, you know, to, to, uh, to, to, counter, uh, to counteract fatigue. So, uh, let's start from, from the beginning in trying to define what, what exactly is fatigue. This is, a, a, I borrow from a, a dictionary. There are many, you know, uh, uh, definitions, but uh, let's stick with this one here. Awareness or exertion from labor, exertion, stress, temporary loss of power to respond that is induced in a sensory receptor. Okay, well, that's where it gets too complicated. Uh, it's important to know that uh, everybody knows uh, what, what fatigue is. An important thing is that fatigue uh, may cause some symptoms uh, as decreased uh, fixed attention, increased reaction time, uh, decreased alertness levels, deficient communication, apathy, complacency, grumpiness, decreased decision making, daytime sleepiness. None of them are welcome in the cockpit. And it's interesting because, uh, first of all, fatigue compromises our ability uh, to, to understand things uh, uh, around us. Meaning that if we are fatigued, we have a difficulty in diagnosing fatigue. That's, that's, that, that's funny. Uh, uh, the University of Paris, they, they, they have a, a good deal of, of, of research in, into fatigue. They, they did a very interesting uh, uh, survey with uh, you know, thousands of pilots and, and, and uh, asking them, how do you recognize fatigue in yourself? How do you recognize fatigue on your co-pilot or the one who is flying with you? And the uh, number one uh, answer for it, uh, on, on, on myself, I recognize uh, fatigue on myself when I do minor slips, you know, minimum mistakes. And uh, about the, the, you know, the other one, but I recognize the other one when they are doing you know, uh, important mistakes. But they were talking to you know, about each other. So this is exactly the picture that you cannot identify fatigue on yourself. Right? It's, it's really difficult. And meaning that, you know, if, I, if you forget anything that I'll be talking, you know, later on, if you think about the possibility that you are fatigued, it could be, you certainly are. So, and that's enough not to fly into IMC conditions. This is you know, the, your threshold not to, not to fly into that zone. Uh, interesting enough, the, uh, the same survey also asked the same question to, to uh, significant others for, the, uh, for those pilots. And, uh, and they will say that uh, grumpiness was the number one. So when the pilot arrived at home, you know, kicking you know, uh, uh, the dog or, you know, uh, 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 or uh, children, this is how they, they know that uh, the pilot was fatigued. So fatigue in aviation impacts working out regulations, flight crew regulations, ATC, we just had, you know, two, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, big uh, events uh, that uh, were related to ATC uh, sleeping on, on, on ship work, and of course maintenance, and, 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 and even the business person that you might be, be traveling with, and, uh, and, and important to know that the legislation, uh, so the regulators, uh, 
were based initially. Most of the, the, the regulations were based upon the uh, labor bargaining and not exactly anything that was scientifically based. But today there is a lot of scientific evidence out there. And that's why things are changing uh, for, for the good, I guess. And uh, people used to think of, about fatigue as something that, you know, okay, I'll recharge my batteries. Some, something that uh, you are draining and then you need to, you know, to recharge. I, I, I think it, it, it works the other way around. It's something that is building up and then I need to get rid of. Uh, like I, I, I'm doing some maintenance. So, uh, uh, if I don't have enough sleep, and this could be compounded by, you know, circadian rhythms problems, and we're going to discuss about that, or stress, or any individual factor, you know, this will, will be building up and need to be removed from time to time. Just something, you know, it's building up and in, 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 in impairing, uh, you know, jamming the gears, something like that. And importantly, fatigue can be masked. Meaning, the state is there, it, it's already built up. But for example, now, I, I, I took a, you know, a very late flight, and on top of that, we have two delays. So I eventually you know, reached the hotel, it was about 1.30. So, but I'm walking here, so you don't know that I'm fatigued, although I am, just because I'm doing some exercise. So I'm masking the, the, the fatigue state, but it's right there. So it's important to know, for example, if you fall asleep right now, it's not my fault. It's your fault. Because the, the fatigue is there, I'm just bringing monotony. Right? Monotony unmasks fatigue. It doesn't, doesn't cause fatigue, but unmasks uh, fatigue. Uh, so, uh, important then to know is that uh, how, 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 how the whole system works. And uh, to, to, to to find out you know, a strategy to mitigate fatigue. So the important thing is that, okay, there's only one solution, only one uh, true solution for that. Although again, you know, doctors has, has we, we have a, a, a major problem because we provide maintenance to a very highly sophisticated piece of equipment without having the manufacturer's manual. So it, it, it's a problem. We are trying to do reverse engineering and we are going more and more, but I know, be aware that we can change our mind and say, oh, remember that? No, forget it. So, but important here is that sleep is the only solution and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about quantity and quality and how the, you know, the lack of those, of, of both, uh, will induce what we call sleep death. But first of all, the first important message is that uh, sleep isn't a passive state. So again, we are not just switching off uh, the engines. No, we are changing from operation to maintenance. So actually, uh, when you sleep, you are in a very active maintenance state. And not, you are not you know, just resting. You're just switching the uh, type of operations you are performing in your uh, system or your, your equipment. And it's important to know then that we, we are, in, in, in that regard, we are regulated by what we call uh, circadian rhythms. And uh, the circadian rhythm is that we know there is some fluctuation of many you know, uh, body parameters uh, along the day. So circadian from uh, the Latin circa, uh, close to, diem, day. So, Rhythms that uh, repeat themselves in a, in a almost a day, a 24 hours period, and one of them is exactly the you know the, the awareness, and it goes along with the body temperature. It's interesting because you, you can see that body temperature drops during the night time, and then uh, 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 no, uh, 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 raises again, and then the, the second dip, and again night uh, 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 you know a uh, more pronounced uh, dip here. So it, it's a cycle. But when we think about circadian rhythm, actually there are many circadian rhythms. There's the, uh, uh, the uh, many hormones behave differently. For, for example, growth hormone has a peak during the night. Uh, steroids, corticosteroids, those pr produced by the, the adrenal glands, they have a peak in the morning. So, as you can see here, and melatonin has a peak in, in, in the evening. So. We have many different uh, circadian rhythms, and just and, and I, I know it doesn't apply to, to or may think it doesn't apply to your kind of operation, but this is working in everybody, and and, and, and every time, and uh, and 
what we call jet lag, just for you to know, is that when we have what we call internal desynchronization, meaning that uh, some rhythms are, are moving you know, to a new uh, time zone, some are in a, a slower pace, so you have something internally uh, desynchronized, and that's why it's so bad. When you are, you know, everything is, is again, in the same uh, cycle, then you are, you are recovering, then you are adjusted to a new time zone. But uh, do we need to cross time zones to affect circadian patterns? And the answer is a big, big no. No, by no means. You just need to have early and late departures. So if you are shifting your, you know, your schedule, and this is very common for, for uh, uh, I guess, for, for uh, uh, kind of aviation that we're forming, sometimes you need to get up uh, early, sometimes you need to, to stay late at night, you know, to, in order to, to accomplish your missions. And again, just uh, you know, think about my, my colleagues in the medical field, we work in shift works. Again, sometimes I work in, uh, at night, and it's a night shift, sometimes it's a day shift. Again, I'm shifting my time, internal time zone without, you know, even, you know, uh, 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 walking too far. So, moving shift is, a, is an important component of that. So this affects everybody. And, and again, if we thought now, you know, if we look into performance in circadian rhythms, no surprise that you know you have this uh, again this dip cons uh, you know that is uh, that coincides with exactly that uh, what we call the low circadian phase and, and again it's important to uh, it's important to think about this as as uh, for example those are the best opportunities for us to get some maintenance it's just like you know you're scheduling a maintenance uh, to, to, to your aircraft those are the best slots to get maintenance. So, uh, and, and this is prepared by the software that is running uh, inside here. So, uh, we, we may, you know, modulate this, for example, if we are running, if we are paying a lot of attention, we can overcome slightly uh, the, 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 the trend, or uh, uh, if we have, if we are highly motivated, we can overcome this uh, 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 a little bit, but still we'll have the, the dip uh, later on. Uh, uh, depending on, on sleep loss, we can change or we can increase uh, the, the, the depth of this, uh, of this uh, sleep uh, uh, favorable uh, slot. So that's why uh, afternoon sleepness, as we make the experience, is not exactly you know a cultural thing. It's actually a human thing, as we can see here. So it's not only a person in. in uh, you know, in, in Mexico or, or South America or Spain, but even affects you know those with superpowers, as we can document here. And uh, yes, if you are lecturing in fatigue, you are not by no, no means you are immune. Although I think it, it, it was I know this photographer I'm, I'm still trying to find him because it, it was just a blink and got this right there. So, but, but from you know it's being depicted in, in many different situations. So. Let's try to understand a little bit, and sorry for being uh, too medical uh, today, how, how sleep works. If, if, if I'm saying, if, and if you're convinced that uh, we are talking about maintenance, so let's understand what is exactly going on when you're sleeping. So we can define, in, uh, by looking to the uh, electroencephalographic uh, patterns, we can define some, uh, and you can see here quite easily, uh, even for a doctor, it's easy easy to understand that you know you can go from this very uh, uh, short uh, amplitude uh, waves when you are awake to a stage uh, of profound sleep where you know the, the frequency and the amplitude of the, the, those waves are entirely different so we can monitor and define uh, different stages uh, of, of, of sleep uh, depth uh, using the EEG. And, and then there is a phase that we call uh, REM sleep, REM standing for rapid eye movement, or paradoxical sleep, because you are sleeping, but if you are monitoring the, uh, your eyes movement, it, it, it's rapidly moving uh, you know, uh, uh, side to side, uh, and again, so you are not resting at all, there is something going on you know, inside here. So, uh, if we monitor a, uh, a typical eight hours uh, sleep, uh, sleep uh, period, what we see is that we progressively go into deep sleep, and then we have a short phase of, of REM sleep, and then again, so in this cycle of going down, going, going deeper, 
and then a period of REM sleep repeats uh, about five times, four to five times during the, the, during the night. And interestingly enough, and you can see here, the REM period, you know, uh, it increases as we go to the, to the second half of, of your sleep. So there is more REM sleep when you are about to wake up. And uh, so it's not so... Uh, and you know, this is a very simplistic or maybe even over simplistic explanation. But we know, for example, that we need our system needs uh, uh, maintenance of, of, uh, of hardware and software. So we need uh, to maintain our muscles, our musculoskeletal system. And apparently, these phases of deep sleep, especially phase three and four, are the ones where some uh, protein maintenance is, is, uh, is, is going on. And therefore, you know, uh, the hardware is, is, is being repaired. And that the rain phase is apparently where your software is being repaired, so you are just you know, doing a defrag on your hard disk, you know, setting the uh, new pointers here. Again, it's, it's simplistic, but uh, actually it's, it's, it's not too far from the truth. But an important thing is that what we call now, and I'm introducing a very important concept, it, you know, it, it, it will come in your test after this, uh, is that uh, what we call quality sleep is the sum of deep sleep, stage three and four, and REM sleep. This is quality sleep. So uh, here, the, the chances for you to, to you know, to uh, uh, to get awakened is uh, is greater than here. Here, if you are in this stage, you know, you need to shake the, the individual, and then all. Oh, so, because we, we have this sleep inertia, because we are coming actually from the grave, you know, yeah, we are, we are in a very deep uh, uh, stage, and we are, you know, uh, the, the activity that is going on here is very, let's say, primitive, comparing to what is going on when you are awake. But here, you see, it's, it's really close, so uh, any external uh, 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 interference could wake you up. And so this is important to know. And then, this explains, for example, because, okay, uh, how, how, how much sleep do we need? Can, can you hear me? Still? Barely? Better now? Okay, uh, uh, so, perfect now, thank you so much. So, on average, the average individual, and uh, on average, what I'm talking here is that uh, I'm talking about 95% of the individuals, uh, admittedly or, or not, they need uh, on average seven to eight hours of sleep every night or every uh, sleep period. And it ranges though from four to 11 hours. But as I said, only 5% are short and or long sleepers. And uh, what is the difference? So how could people survive with only four hours of sleep? And the answer is exactly the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, uh, uh, the shallow sleep, stage one and two, particularly stage two. So people who are sh uh, uh, short sleepers, they have this ability to go directly into stage three and four. And that's the difference. But uh, you know, if, we, we, if we sum, the quality sleep for long sleepers and short sleepers, they are about the same thing, right? So it, 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 it has to do with, with many things and we're gonna touch this uh, uh, shortly now. So let's talk about then quantity, quality, and sleep depth. So sleep depth is exactly uh, that state that uh, uh, fatigue is there, you know, it, it built up, so it's there. You are uh, to, 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 to continue awake, you are, uh, you know, uh, 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 taking advantage of some masking strategies, being, you know, uh, uh, walking, doing exercise, having some, uh, some coffee or, uh, or a coke, some caffeine. So, but uh, what, what happens here is that, you know, those maintenance, those brain maintenance guys, they are so diligent that they will try to give, uh, to, you know, to provide maintenance anyway. And, and therefore, and, and the, the, so this is good news, they are, you know, Guys, but the problem is you are still operating when they start doing their, their maintenance. This is what we call a micro sleep. So when you just got off guard, that, then they, they come and they start sleeping, you know, start the, the sleeping uh, uh, phase, anyways, despite your 
your, your will. So just to, just to see what, what is that is the microscope. So and it takes you know very few actually seconds for you to you know to because the problem is actually that even before you you got into microscope the, those seconds or minutes before you are already losing focus and you're already losing attention and that's the problem your eyes are open but you can see in this no he, he was already uh, looking drowsy before the, the, the eyes really got shut. And that's because of that. So, and it's interesting because you can even start some dreamlike thoughts just before you know this happening. And this happens, uh, as I said, many times in in, in boring lectures. So uh, again, uh, the, the, the main uh, thing for fatigue uh, avoidance is sleep. And uh, you know, some animals can you know help sleeping uh, in, in a, you know very cold, very uh, warm environments. They can you know not need a, a pillow uh, uh, or you know sleep upside down and, but uh, human beings they need for quality sleep and again uh, here uh, what we were trying by getting quality sleep is reducing the, 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 the time to, for you to get into deep sleep so you need to, to think about protecting and this is the educational part of it again no regulator can do that for you uh, you need to take care of your sleep environment. So to, to have a good uh, sleep environment, it, it needs to be dark, it needs to be quiet, and it needs to be in the perfect temperature. Not too cold, not too hot. Both are, are, are bad. Uh, uh, and therefore you need to, you know, to, to have this uh, environment. And yes, every ex accessory is, is welcome, you know, even a teddy bear. In this case, even a teddy monkey. Uh, works the same, but uh, it, it's important and, and only you can take care of, uh, about that. Uh, and th there's another uh, uh, aspect that I would like to touch here briefly, is what, <coughs> napping. So napping is, uh, is a, a period of sleep lasting from 20 or 15 to, to, to uh, minutes to two hours. And uh, an interesting thing about uh, napping is that it doesn't replace entirely sleep. sleep but it has a, a restorative effect anyways by alleviating what we call the sleep pressure or, or maintenance guy's pressure you know, in, in, to, 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 to force you to sleep and therefore increase alertness and this is what I recommend you know, uh, every time you, you feel uh, 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 you know, that you are fatigued th this means that you are and therefore you can benefit for a, a short uh, nap and interestingly enough the restorative effect is the same for 20 minutes to two hours of, of, of napping. So sometimes a very short nap, you know, in a favorable situation, can you know uh, 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 bring you to uh, alertness levels that are you know now uh, within the safety envelope. Okay, so uh, and this is just you know for you to know how do we adjust to a new local time? The most uh, yeah, with my my my, my wristwatch here, I just can't you know. Here I am in, in, in Miami time, although I was in, in Phoenix time you know, a few hours ago. So, uh, but, but here, to adjust to a new local time, you need time. And uh, you can accelerate that uh, by uh, the most important, the most strong uh, external time reference is, uh, is light. So if you expose yourself to sunlight, if you need, in, by, by, by any means, if you need to adjust quickly to a local time, the, the, the strategy should be, you know, exercise, sunlight, very bright, this is how we do it. And actually, you know, in, in those labs, we can 
induce uh, 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 differences in the circadian uh, you know, phase of the cycle just by exposing the individual to, to, uh, to bright light or to darkness. Uh, meaning that if on the other, uh, on the other uh, side of the, of the coin you don't want to adjust, then you should avoid you know, uh, brightness and you should avoid sunlight. And it, it is important to know that the, the strategy when you are dealing with a, with a you know, time zone adaptation it, it's totally different if you are the executive that needs uh, you know, to conduct a, a very important meeting or if you are you know, a tourist that you need to, to maximize your stay uh, you know, a, a abroad or wherever and if you are the pilot who will be working while flying and not, you know, uh, and not resting or, or napping uh, uh, in flight. So, and therefore, you need to, you know, the, the rule number one here is that uh, not uh, uh, arrive you know, uh, at the airport to, 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 uh, to perform any flight if you already have a sleep net. Meaning that you should, you know, and, and this is, you know, I have bad news and good news. Uh, bad news first. You cannot accumulate rest. Meaning, if you are not, you know, tired enough, again, sleep is not a, 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 an active thing. A, the volunteer thing is going to bed, right? But getting into the sleep mode, it's not, it, it's not voluntary. So uh, you, you need to be in the, the, the correct phase to do it. And this explains sometimes why, uh, for example, if you do a, an overnight flight and then you, 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 you finally reach, uh, you know, hit the bed at your hotel, sometimes you cannot get to sleep or you can get some sleep, but about noon, if you start sleeping at five, at about noon, you're gonna wake up anyways. And that's why, because your temperature is going up no, no one told you, uh, your, your system, that you're, you, know, you need now uh, some rest. And uh, this is a, a very unfavorable slot to sleep. And therefore, you cannot go, uh, 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 good, uh, acquire good quality sleep. You may sleep, but again, the quality won't be the same because you are in the wrong circadian phase. Does it, does it make sense for you? And therefore, you, know, you need to pay your debt before you, uh, you, know, you arrive there. And how to, uh, the, the, now the good news, the good news is that, okay, you cannot save rest, but then you can pay your sleep debt with less debt than you acquire. Uh, you know, so it's not, it's different than a, a mortgage or a, a loan that you need to pay interest. If you can, you know, get good quality sleep, let's say that you accumulated a, a seven hours uh, uh, sleep debt, but if you can get, you know, good quality, maybe you can pay your debt in four hours. Maybe in two hours. Does it make sense? Just because you are, you know, but then you need to, you know, to pay close attention to your sleep environment to maximize that uh, uh, slot of opportunity. So uh, we have uh, what we call preventive and operational measures. So number one, the preventive is avoid sleep death. So utilize the best circuit to sleep. So if you are on your way to the airport, for example, you are using a van or whatever, not your car, hopefully, but if someone else is driving, you can have, you know, you can take a, a short nap. It's, it, it's good. If, if you, if, and if you can have a snap, that means that you are in need of a snap, of, of, of a nap. So, uh, 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 Take care, of, of course, of the, your sleep and work management, of course, uh, you know, the, the, the policy that you are uh, imposing yourself or the company is. And, of course, you can use, uh, now, if you are having, okay, you, you try to prevent it, but, you know, uh, you are there and you are sleepy and you are fine. So, now, what to do? So, you can have down operational countermeasures. And they, uh, it's actually, the, we can summarize them as a judicious uh, use of masking strategies and then caffeine, exercise, and even napping, depending on the kind of aviation that you are performing, or uh, you know, uh, some uh, strategy that you may you know, uh, uh, utilize. Another thing that uh, is uh, pretty new, and I'm almost uh, wrapping up, is that now we can, uh, uh, thanks to a, a lot of research that has been put into this uh, subject, we have access to software uh, that can, you know, and, and mathematical models that can predict the level of fatigue. 
given the uh, certain uh, sleep schedule that you may have in, in the best. We have this safe developed by uh, uh, Kinetics in uh, the UK. There's uh, IBR here in the USA. Today that we have this MP BAM from, from Boeing and uh, Jefferson and also another from Circadian. And these are uh, some uh, screenshots of those uh, softwares. And uh, this one, for example, is, this is from, from SAFE. Very interesting because it, it will show, for example, in a multi-crew uh, operation in, 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 in a you know, uh, uh, medium to long haul flight, it will show you red the periods of the flight that you know, fatigue and strikes. And then you can play, you know, what if, saying, well, now I have an uh, uh, augmented crew, or I remove a crew member, how, how this affects the whole model. So it's very interesting in planning, especially for corporate uh, 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 aviation, uh, uh, corporate departments. The same here with, uh, with SAFE, we can see, you know, it's uh, not, not uh, very clear, but you can see uh, the, the, the circadian phases here, and then the, the duty time, and then the, they even compare your level of drowsiness with an equivalent of blood alcohol levels. So you can have an understanding of, of what is your cognitive uh, cognition power, you know, comparing to uh, the same amount, uh, uh, an equivalent amount of alcohol, just because you are sleep deprived. Put the two together and you get a uh, big trouble. And, and this one is, is pretty cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually, you can download it from, uh, to your, you know, uh, iPod or your uh, iPhone today. You can download from, from iTunes. It's very clever and it was developed by, by, by Jefferson. All of them have uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages, uh, easier and more, more uh, less user-friendly interfaces, but they are out there. And, in, in, uh, and I think this is a significant uh, recent achievement. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, the question is uh, uh, input data from, 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 for this software. There are two ways you can input, uh, uh, for example, all of them. You can input, you know, uh, um, uh, manually. So let's say you, you input your, let's say, your uh, previous uh, three nights of sleep, and then you input your schedule, and then you're going to see, you know, that the, the software will draw, uh, uh, you know, a line of uh, where your alertness level would be, you know, during the, the work phases, and then you can again play with, well, let's see if I can have some sleep here, and how that would affect, you know, uh, the uh, the overall schedule. So yes, and they can import from from some measuring devices that I, I, I'm going to show shortly. So, of course, there are some problems with fatigue modeling. You know, the you need to to keep uh, uh, track of this uh, all this. Uh, aspects here. So again, it's, it's difficult to have something because, once more, I, I repeat that uh, we are talking about individuals at the end of the day. We are talking about you know, this, uh, this machine. And, uh, it, it, but they are extremely interesting. This is, uh, for example, this come, came from uh, my previous experience. I, I worked for an airline for 23 years as, as medical director and we started a, a fatigue uh, countermeasures program there, and uh, we monitored our pilots uh, a, a while using this kind of device. Uh, and this is a device, for example, that can communicate with those softwares and, and in order to not, now you are not talking about a, a diary, of, but uh, actual data, because here, this is a, what we call a altimeter. It just measures uh, know, how active you are. You, you wear it uh, on your uh, non-dominant uh, wrist. So, you can see, you know, uh, the more dark is that because you are more active. So here, the person is sleeping, 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 active, active, active. Uh, actually, here is so inactive between two phases of activity that I know he removed the, the wrist and, and put it over, <laughs> over the counter or, or wherever, or was taking a shower, although he, he didn't need to do that. And of course, you can superimpose the data from on, 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 on the flight. Actually, this was a, a, a crew uh, rest uh, sleep here. And uh, this was a flight from, from Rio de Janeiro to, to Japan, and a very tricky one to, uh, to manage. But again, what I would like to show is exactly that you can even have uh, uh, hard data, you know, not only uh, yourself including data here. Yeah. So, uh, to, to finalize, I would just like to touch on sleep-inducing medication. So definitely they are not recommended, you know, in any new uh, uh, 
a version of uh, or a suggestion of a uh, fatigue uh, management system. They will need uh, someone to prescribe. They are, you know, uh, most of them they are uh, they, uh, prescription drugs. And there are very few studies uh, uh, um, uh, about that, but uh, evidence is coming. But uh, and I personally think that there is a, a place to them, um, uh, especially if we are talking about, let's say now that, uh, again, to go to Zabib, you need to, to have the, 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 the complete, you know, a favorable envir environment. And there are some instances that the, the unfavorable component of this environment is exactly yourself. So if you're thinking, oh, now you just landed, you go, you know, you go to the hotel, and now you're thinking about the bills to pay, and uh, all, you know, the, the refund, uh, you know, uh, income tax, and, uh, and everything. So you know, your brain is still very busy, and then you cannot, get, you know, get a, 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 you know, start your your sleep. And uh, today we have this kind of drugs that they are just uh, helpful to, you know, to this initial phase to induce sleep. And then they leave you on your own. Uh, because the, the first uh, drug, uh, you know, sleeping inducing drugs, the, the, uh, the, the madness uh, and uh, all, all this stuff, they, do, they don't promote a good quality sleep. And, and, they, and they, they have, you know, a hangover effect, so they are not good. But those short-acting, they could be utilized, again, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, in careful and special situations. Uh, melatonin uh, is, is very good in terms, because melatonin is actually the, uh, the hormone that responds to, to darkness and then uh, promotes sleep internally. So it's the messenger, oh, it's dark outside, so it's time to go to bed. This is the home, the, the, you know, the messenger of that. So it's, it's good if you want to adjust, but sometimes you don't want to adjust. And therefore, you know, it's, it's not the best strategy to, to adjust because you don't have time enough to adjust. And uh, so I, I already uh, talked about benzodiazepines and, and short-acting drugs. So again, you, we need to be very careful about drugs. And this is the, uh, just you know, to, to underscore what I just said, Zopinem, which is, uh, uh, the name is uh, Ambien, which is a short-acting, you know, uh, fast-acting and short-acting uh, uh, sleep-inducing drug, should be authorized. But this is the Aerospace, uh, Aerospace Medical Association uh, position, but again, it's not, it's not a regulation, it's just a, a recommendation from a scientific uh, uh, organization, just because, as I said, it has a uh, half-life of 2.5, 2.8 hours, so it's very short-acting. It's just, you know, a, a, a first push into, for you to go into sleep. And uh, it's fully metabolized after 10 hours. So, in summary, uh, this is a fascinating topic, uh, I guess, and I, I hope that you enjoy uh, this as, as much as I do. Uh, and important changes are coming from the regulatory authority, and uh, fatigue management must be incorporated in your, your uh, corporate uh, aviation department or even your personal uh, safety management system. And, uh, and the final and most, most important message is that uh, fatigue management depends on the individual at attitude, so it depends on, on, on us, it depends on you. So, with that said, I'll be more than happy, and thank you so much for your attention, and I'll be more than happy to take some questions as, as time allows. Thank you so much. Thanks.